in Westminster to try and represent our amazing constituents and to get sorted some of the biggest problems that are facing our country. We fight for issues from safety for women and supporting small businesses, a whole range of things that we're passionate about to try and make people's lives better. And joining me today to look at some of the best work that we can accomplish as MPs is Richard Holden, my constituency neighbour, the Conservative MP for North West Durham. Richard, thank you for joining us today. Delighted to, Deanna. Well, it's great to have a fellow Red Waller on, but I think, I think one of the reasons I was really keen to get you on is because you've run some really interesting campaigns. One might say slightly niche campaigns, uh, but tell us, I, I want to start with, you, with your public toilets one. T let's t tell viewers at home what you've been uh, doing on public toilets. So one of the things that uh, I found out when I first became an MP, and some MPs have been campaigning this for a long period of mm -hmm. time, was that public toilets face uh, business rate charges to local council. Now, some of these councils are actually tiny town and parish councils, mm -hmm. like Walsingham in my constituency, and uh, they were having to pay business rates to keep them open. And one of the issues we've seen over the last few years is that people um, really want to keep their public toilets open. They're really vital as the population gets a bit older and they're vital for people like pregnant women, anybody with hidden disabilities. Mm -hmm. And we've seen them closing at a massive rate of knots. And one of those reasons was because of this extra tax that they were facing. So um, I picked up a campaign that had been running for a long time by some other MPs who got promoted and that sort of thing. <laughs> and I took it on and... Um, we managed to get, get, get the law changed this year, um, last year actually, which was a, a massive uh, help to some of those local councils to help keep some of those facilities open. Mm -hmm. So there was that. You also did some work on motorhome taxes. Yeah, within a few days of becoming elected, um, I found out that uh, basically an EU directive was being put in, which was going to see a 705% increase on the tax on a motorhome, basically um, taxing at the same uh, a £40,000 motorhome, which somebody might buy as they're approaching retirement. Mm -hmm. They're taxing the same as a new Rolls-Royce uh, uh, every year in terms of tax. This was going to cripple local businesses, particularly uh, Owen Heimer, who employ uh, 500 people in my constituency. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, this is crazy. We're leaving the EU. Well, you and I were then there. Uh, yeah, I know there's some videos voting for to leave the EU. Yeah, I remember. And, um, and so why are we pursuing this? Um, so one of the things that I did was to uh, really push the Treasury to say, look, we've got to reverse this. Mm -hmm. um, this was going to have a direct impact on my constituents, but also, actually, it's not green to have people flying off when they can do a couple of thousand miles a year uh, just having a bit of a motorhome holiday here in the UK. And do you not think that one of the best things about this job is that there can be an issue that arises in your constituency that can be something that's never crossed your radar before, but then we have this incredible platform and ability to really bring about change to improve lives. And I know you're doing that at the moment, aren't you, on people buying cars who don't have driving licenses? Yes, so, I mean, you, you look, it's, pe it's people's personal experience. You're doing that with the One Punch campaign. Um, but it's also uh, some issues that come up in your constituency. So one of them which came up in mine was I had a tragic death of a lad called Andrew Rowlands um, uh, just uh, about a year after I'd been elected. And uh, he was killed in a car which had no registered owner. The chap had been able to buy it, a 17-year-old, without a driving licence, without even having a driving test, and it should have been scrapped. But to scrap a car, you've got to provide ID mm -hmm. and you've got to provide a UK bank account. Actually, to sell a car to somebody else, you just need to provide the cash. And it's, even, it's totally voluntary as to whether you put date of birth or a driving licence details on the mm -hmm. form. I just think that we could prevent some of these kids getting hold of cars who shouldn't have them by having to provide, a, uh, those, having to provide those details on the V5 form rather than it being voluntary. I just think it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. also affects things like rural crime. People Absolutely. buy these things like uh, community cars, they call them, uh, and uh, they can be used for uh, all sorts of things, from uh, people going and poaching late at night, but also in towns and cities for things like uh, county lines drug dealing, because they're totally anonymous, because you can fill in anybody's details on the V5 mm -hmm. form, it gets lost off the system, and unless it happens to get physically picked up by a physical police car, then, you know, it just travels around and nobody can stop it. Mm -hmm. I think one of the questions that a lot of people at home probably have is, how do you even go about running a campaign like this? So, so let, let, let's, let's, take, let's take the motorhomes yeah. sort of policy that you were looking to get changed. Where did you start? Who did you speak to? And then how did that law get changed? So initially, the, the people I, I needed to speak to initially were the people who had, were most impacted. So I spoke to the uh, businesses and also some of the workers that, uh, who were going to be affected by it. Um, and some of the trade unions, actually, on the ground. And then when I found out what the issue was, to do a lot of digging and working with the Commons Library to get some of that detail out of there. And then it's a question of trying to build a coalition of MPs together, so try and get uh, other people on side with it, uh, which is the most important thing, because you need to show you've got support in Parliament mm -hmm. to do it. 
and then start having some of those serious conversations with the Chancellor, you know, phone up his PPSs, phone up the Chancellor himself, try and get meetings, and just put across to them how important this is uh, for your constituents. Something that I know you've backed me on recently is this change to uh, pensions, trying mm -hmm. to ensure that old to enrolment covers people in uh, part-time work, as well as those in full-time work or younger workers as well, to ensure that they've got security in uh, retirement. So there's a... So, but it, you've got to get that big, broad coalition of MPs, and sometimes it's really helpful, like with my hymenoplasty and virginity testing mm -hmm. stuff I've been working on recently, to get a real cross-party coalition as Absolutely. well. So you can pressure the government from every side, because often it's not the government doesn't want to do this stuff, it's just an element of inertia within the civil mm -hmm. service machine. And that's one of the biggest problems, I think, that uh, MPs face, and that's what you've got to fight to overcome. Mm -hmm.